Welcome everybody. I'm Alexa Carr, marketing here at Algorand, and I'm here today with John Clark, co-founder of AlgoFi. Hey, John. Hi, Alexa. Thanks for having me. Of course. It's funny, we talked this time almost exactly a year ago, I think. It was before you'd even launched AlgoFi to mainnet, and it's incredible to look back at all that you guys have accomplished since then and to see some of your recent announcements and what's upcoming. So before we get into AlgoFi V2 and your governance protocol and some new stuff ahead, maybe reflect a little bit on, on the past year. Um, you know, like I said, a year ago, you told the world about what you were building around December, I think, right? It launched. And how's the experience been since then? Maybe especially in the in the context of the broader market this year. Sure. So a lot has happened since we uh, started uh, building on Algorand. You know, we we were, you know, iterating on the testnet, building our community during like from around August to uh, December last year. And since then, it just feels like we've been pushing out uh, new uh, protocols to mainnet to make the Algify um, DeFi suite more and more robust uh, with, with uh, each passing month. I think uh, during this time, you know, the big changes are the team has become very um, sort of adept at uh, building and diagnosing issues with Algorand uh, smart contracts. With just building a product in general, you know, we we were a startup, first time entrepreneurs, so there were a lot of things, both technical and non-technical, that we learned uh, during this process. Um, so that that was uh, very exciting. Uh, I think beyond uh, the team's growth, uh, the ecosystem, uh, you know, in Algorand and the broader DeFi ecosystem has grown. You know, it's about another year of DeFi protocols being online and showing that. They often, you know, they have their, they have uh, benefits. They are decentralized, uh, you know, in, in the ideal state. They they don't suffer from the same issues that centralized lending and trading services do. And I think we're seeing that even more in the last few weeks with the issues that Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi, uh, just to name a few, have had. So I think a lot of growth on the team, a lot of growth in uh, DeFi. And specifically for Algorand, I'm seeing more and more teams with each passing um, month enter the ecosystem despite the bear market that we've recently had. Uh, you know, there since like May, obviously the Luna uh, crash brought on a little bit of negative sentiment in uh, DeFi, uh, particularly uh, for users. But I think on the builder side, the people that are really sold on the importance and the benefits DeFi can bring to the uh, average person are uh, even more emboldened. And I'm seeing that in the Algorand ecosystem. And more and more people are realizing that Algorand is the place to build scalable technology. For sure. It is exciting. Um, it's been a funny experience being in this seat because there is so much exciting stuff happening in our ecosystem when a lot of like the broader sentiment is negative. And I'm like, look, look over here, guys. <laughs> like a great place to be. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so that brings us up to today. Um, let's start maybe with AlgoFi V2. What are people going to see that's new? I know there's a lot of elements to it that people will be excited about, not the least of which includes some support for Ledger. So tell me, tell me about AlgoFi V2. Sure. So uh, simply put, we think AlgoFi V2 is the most advanced lending protocol that you know uh, one could build with the latest AVM technology. You know, we've managed to uh, through some some just you know uh, using like a lot of it has to do with the advancements the Algorand Inc core development team has had on the AVM. They've really, I mean, this this uh, virtual machine has matured tremendously over the last year and a half, and so there's a lot more that we can do today that we couldn't do a year ago. Um, and we've gotten to see that organic growth uh, as builders, which is really fun. Um, but specifically, this has allowed us to support an unlimited amount of assets. So in theory, the Algify B2 lending could have a thousand assets. Now users can opt into at most 21, um, but we've felt that that is like more than enough assets uh, that anyone would want on a lending protocol. And it's, uh, but it's really cool that the protocol itself can manage, uh, you know, an unbounded amount. Um, and this this has been brought on by uh, some uh, innovative thinking from uh, some of our engineers on how to manage uh, the uh, updating of like user data in uh, in a certain uh, transactions to the lending protocol. But uh, beyond that, we have a full ledger support. 
uh, again, some we had some uh, clever thinking there around how uh, transactions get signed, which allows us to uh, fully support ledger devices. And uh, we're also going to um, have some, some tweaks to the uh, interest rate model and the way that uh, users can borrow assets, which will allow us to onboard uh, riskier assets without threatening the solvency of the protocol. Um, and it also uh, tweaks how the interest rate evolves uh, as the amount of money being borrowed uh, changes and, and the curve basically is a bit smoother, which we think provides for a better user experience when there's a lot of demand to borrow. Well, that sounds great. When is it all rolling out? So uh, right now we're putting the finishing touches on the web app. We want to get it out early uh, next week, but we're going to announce a date uh, this week, actually. So it should be okay. coming very soon. For all the viewers, we're talking July 27th, so maybe rolling out the first week of August. We'll get this video I'll out. get out this video while it goes live. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Um, how are the... And, this is shameful. I should know how to say it by now. The Aeneas incentives. Did I get it right? How are they going to be a part of you too? I don't blame you. I think uh, <laughs> I don't know the, the origin. The origin of the, like I took Latin in high school, um, but uh, that's the extent of my uh, knowledge of like <laughs> affairs. I don't, you know, I think the Aeneas rewards or the Aeneas or whatever. Um, uh, funny name, but uh, ultimately very practical purpose. They've been very useful in. It's, it's user acquisition. So uh, many businesses in Web 2 and Web 3 employ user acquisition, like rebates or, oh, the first year is free, things like that. And DeFi, uh, this is a very common method for acquiring users who basically they come in, they're, that activation energy sometimes is quite high to get people using a new technology. But if you can financially incentivize it, now they're on the platform, they're using the protocol. And what we've noticed is even as rewards have uh, been reduced, like the APR that's being uh, generated, or even wound down in certain areas, the liquidity doesn't all migrate away. As a matter of fact, the majority stays, and this is due to, um, in part, our ecosystem is a bit smaller, and so if there were more opportunities, you might see a bit more uh, moving around uh, of money. But I think a lot of it has to do with people finding the technology compelling, you know, getting getting a, you know getting utility from trading and lending, even if it's uh, for speculative means, um, mm -hmm. and just generally enjoying the uh, product. And so they're staying for the uh, the usage, which is uh, pretty much the goal. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's how it's meant to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Cool. Okay. So in addition to V two, you are going to have a governance <laughs> protocol rolling out soon. Tell me about that. Yes. Sure. So, you know, we've had the uh, Aeneas rewards we've had, and that's helped us get uh, users uh, on the lending protocol, the AMM, NanoSwap, the Vault. And uh, soon, Alphi will be launching its governance portal. This will allow users to vote on changes to the protocol. So we're beginning, and uh, we're going to write a Medium post to summarize this, but we're beginning our, uh, you know, walk towards full decentralization. Uh, you know, this will take time, but the goal is to have users starting to vote on things like market parameters. This could be interest rates for assets. It could be collateral factors, borrow factors, things that affect the usage of the lending protocol, the, you know, the AMM and, and other products that we offer. And uh, after, and in the initial state, the V0 that we're launching, it'll be like our grand foundation governance where people vote with their uh, governance token and the we will go uh you know make that change but ultimately uh in later versions of governance we want to move to programmatic execution where users will actually create proposals themselves which by the way they can in the v0 users will be able to create proposals um which is a bit different from foundation governance where they are created for you so that is right. one nuanced to our approach we want to open the floor to more um you know sort of creativity and but in the V1 and, and V2, we want it to be fully programmatic where users actually propose transactions uh, mm -hmm. to execute. They get voted on, uh, approved, and ultimately programmatically executed after a certain time delay. And this is how a lot of governance works in the Ethereum ecosystem. And we think that we can implement it just as well, but benefit from the superior algorithm technology. 
That sounds great. That was going to be one of my questions is how are you going to be determining the governance proposals? It sounds like from the beginning, people can propose them if they have thoughts, have ideas, right? Yeah. So uh, the way we are thinking of doing it is we will have a forum, much like the Algorand Inc. forum, where people can propose concepts and users will be able to uh, expand on their ideas in that forum. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth between users discussing the merits of a particular proposal. And after um, you know, users have discussed this and, and generated a succinct proposal to submit to governance, they'll be able to launch their uh, governance proposal. And the governance proposal will consist of a link to that forum um, and a title. So it, it ultimately is uh, we're trying to uh, promote uh, you know, chatting between the members of our community so that ultimately we can walk away and the community can manage uh, the project. And this is the first step. Yeah, I love that. That's very exciting. Um, okay, so I saw something you guys tweeted recently about Coinbase. What's the what was the news there? Sure. So um, some some months back, Coinbase uh, reached out and you know wanted to get more involved in the Algorand ecosystem, uh, particularly the, uh, the DApps, and uh, so they reached out to us and asked us to work together to integrate Coinbase Rails so that users that have Coinbase accounts can directly buy and uh, transfer algos to their uh, Algorand DeFi wallets. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, after working with their uh, tech team and uh, doing the integration, which was actually fairly seamless, that's uh, what we deployed. So now users uh, can basically buy Algo and uh, ultimately we're hoping USDCA directly okay. from Coinbase and uh, bring that to their wallets for uh, use on Algofy, where they can swap Algo into whatever assets they want, they can uh, lend it, they can uh, participate in governance directly. And this is now built in directly to the web app. So that's live and launched. Are, are you able to see how much it's being used? So we are in touch with them to manage, uh, to, to discuss uh, the activity, but they're going to be building out a portal for us to directly see how much uh, activity there is. And I think it's uh, important to measure that because for them to make the business case to keep you know, pushing this forward in Algorand, they, they want to see um, you know, uh, activity growing. So uh, I look forward to seeing those numbers to you know, make sure that uh, that is the case. Is there anything else that you want to make people aware of that's coming on your roadmap? Is there anything, um, you know, governance probably is going to hit sometime in September, right? So what comes after that? So at that point, you know, we have the lending B2, we have the AMM and Nano swap, uh, we have governance. A lot of what we intend on doing moving forward is uh, improving governance uh, incrementally to make the protocol maximally decentralized, which you know will take some time. But uh, the other things we'll be building are composing our existing DeFi building blocks into more interesting applications. So to give you an example, there is a product we could build a, a, called a lending pool, which um, you know essentially we're, we're still ideating how to implement this, but it could be as simple as it's an AMM pool where users uh, can provide liquidity and then you can swap against that liquidity. But the liquidity that's sitting in the pool is getting lend, uh, lend on the uh, lending protocol. So say, for example, it's like an algo USDC pool. When a user comes in LPs, those algos uh, and that USDC first gets put on the lending protocol. It generates a depository receipt and then that sits in the AMM. And then when a user comes to trade against that, those get burned, swapped, and this benefits the LPers because not only are they earning trading fees, but they're also earning lending interest. So it's a way to enhance yield for um, LPs. And that also adds liquidity to the lending protocol. So it, it essentially is a very capital efficient uh, way of providing liquidity. So that's one example, but we, yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah. have and things like, what ideas do people have around how we can compose the protocol? Like, as our AMM grows, another idea is smart order execution, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, on chain. So, you want to go from A to C, but maybe there's a cheaper route from going like A to B and then B to C. Having an mm -hmm. algorithm that you know identifies that for you uh, would be interesting. Very cool. Well, 
given all that you have accomplished in the past year, it'll be exciting to check in again fall 2023 and see where see where you're at. Um, I yep. think my last question to you uh, last year is going to be my same last question to you this year, shamelessly asking, will we see you at Decipher in November? Can we get you out to Dubai? I'd love to have some of these conversations on stage. Yeah, so uh, Dubai is definitely, it's a bit more of a hike than uh, Miami. <laughs> yeah. I, think, uh, I think we can make something work. I think we'll have uh, cool. some representation there for sure. All right, we'll follow up about it. Thanks, John. All right, thank you, Alexa. Appreciate you having me.